spooky season. I'm not making anything spooky this year, but I thought it would be fun to bring you some terrible tales of cosplay. So I asked my Discord for their very best cosplay horror stories. And I have not read them, so we can react together. When I went on for the first time, I found the sewers slash back of the convention center where like the dumpsters are. So you were like behind the building. So my friends and I went there on the first day and took some really cool photos for that good, good apocalypse atmosphere. We had no problems. It was great. The vibes were fantastic. The next day I got to meet up with my friend. He's in a wicked cosplay and we decided to go back to that back location for more photos. As we're exiting the doors, another guy follows us. Being cautious, I turn around and say hello. And it turns out this man is a photographer waiting for his client. We were like, oh, that's cool. Hope they turn up. And he says if the client doesn't show up, he'd like to take photos regardless and offers to take photos of my friend because the photographer wanted to use the smoke bombs he brought. We were like, heck yeah, if the client doesn't show up, we'll tag along. A few minutes later, the photographer comes back and says it's a no-show. So we follow him to one side of the sewers where I think workers unload like deliveries and stuff. Photo shoot goes really quickly. Smoke bombs get lit <laughs> and we get to watch my friend do the coolest shoot I've ever witnessed. Yeah, I've never gotten to do smoke bombs before but oh they look so cool we say thank you to the photographer and go back to the main area to take a few more shots as i'm taking photos i suddenly see a police car oh no with lights flashing wee woo wee woo i suddenly see a police car with lights flashing pull up and i just waved to my friends to get out of the way thinking that the car needed to get through. The car pulls up a little bit. I even throw a peace sign up to the officer in the car, but the car stops. Officer steps out and starts asking my friends and I what we were doing here. The officer accused us of shooting fireworks. Atlanta PD, do you not know what a smoke bomb is? So we just scurried back inside. Finally understanding that someone must have reported the smoke from the smoke bomb and accused someone of launching fireworks. The next few hours, my friends and I were straight up panicking. I call my parents explaining the situation and I find out that we're okay because the officer didn't take down our names. So if I ever go back, I know not to go back there at least without the smoke bombs and to be more discreet. Wow. Oh. They say at the bottom, please keep my name out of this story. One of my friends is still very paranoid and would rather not have anything lead to them either. Wow. I mean, you didn't do anything wrong. You might not have been allowed to do a smoke bomb back there, but you know whose fault that was? The photographer. <laughs> this story comes from Seiko. I decided to go to Magnific Magnificon? Expo, which is in Poland. And I don't think Magnificon is in Polish. I think I just can't say it. Anyway, they had decided to go to Magnificon and were gonna try to take part in the cosplay contest. I never even saw one before, so this was going to be a journey. First mistake was choosing a character that had both armor and weird sewn parts. I don't actually think that's a mistake. I think if you're going to be in a cosplay contest, finding a cosplay where you can showcase lots of different skills, you're gonna be more likely to win. I made all the patterns myself and that turned out quite okay, but I didn't know about contact cement and used a cheap super glue for all the seams. I've never tried to use super glue on EVA foam, but I'm not sure it would work quite the same way as contact cement. Contact cement is really a very specific tool because it has the ability to bond on contact. So when you treat it right, as soon as those pieces get stuck together, they stay together. The problem with contact cement is it's really, really toxic, which is why you haven't seen me use it on this channel yet. I live in an apartment with no outdoor space and I have four cats. So there is no way in hell I'm exposing them to fumes that I can't get out of here or exposing me or my boyfriend to those fumes because they can actually cause brain damage. I'll get back to the story now. <laughs> Anybody says contact cement, I'm like, wear a respirator, do it outside. That's the real horror story is contact cement inside. Anyway, I couldn't even finish on time, cried a lot and even thought about not participating at all. 
but I managed to make it wearable and my family convinced me to go on the stage. I would have tried to convince you to go on the stage too, even if you're not super confident in your cosplay. Competing is such a fun experience. It's always worth doing. Mind you, I didn't have any choreography or rehearsal. I tripped on my skirt and almost fell down and my wig was sliding off my head. While watching other people's performances, I felt a slight ripping on my breastplate. It turned out that it broke on a front seam and I had to repair it with duct tape. I get always bring duct tape too. At the end of the day, I was crying so much that my makeup had washed out, Oh. But in the end, I met awesome cosplay friends and we did a duo cosplay later. See, yeah, that's why you should always compete. At least the experience gave me the opportunity to improve, I think. I hope that I improved. I, I think you have improved. Seiko is a very active member in the Discord and we see all of the stuff she makes and I think it's all great. This story comes from Anonymous. The last convention I went to, I made a serenity dress, serenity dress for the masquerade. And an hour before pre-judging, I put my dress on and all my beading started to fall off. Oh no. Note that I did wear the dress before to make sure everything fit right, but for whatever reason, the end of the thread was being pulled through the backing of multiple rows of bead and, oh my God. and multiple rows of beading were falling off. Oh. I've lost like a pearl or a couple beads before. I cannot imagine all of your work falling off your body. Oh, the only way to make everything stay mostly on was to not take any deep breaths. Oh my God. Oh, that one is so sad. All that work falling onto the floor and not being able to breathe. That's terrible. This next one is from Anonymous. <laughs> and it says to keep it anonymous because it involves Drama. A close friend of mine was very into Nier and wanted to cosplay Devola and Popola with me. I don't know how you say those names. I have only watched people play Nier. Anyway, I hadn't played the video game, but after watching a playthrough, I agreed because I'm a sucker. Wait, I forgot to switch the book. I put all these books on the table so I could keep switching them. I'm so stupid. <laughs> oh, it's so old the pages are coming out. I agreed because I'm a sucker for cosplaying with friends and the designs were kind of cool. We went out and got matching pants, boots, accessories, and fabric within about a week of deciding to do them. Oh wow, y'all went fast. We were even talking about entering a cosplay ma ma max ma masquerade. Masquerade with the costumes once we finished. I ended up with Devola. It took me about a year of working on it on and off during pandemic times before I was really happy with it. Yeah, wigs, wigs take forever. I ended up finishing the wig right as the convention we planned these costumes for announced it was coming back after canceling for the pandemic. So I checked in with my friend and we got to work on the dress and blur bolero. Finally, we get to about a week before the con. My dress is finished and I'm starting on the bolero. My friend, on the other hand, hadn't even started her wig. Decided to completely start her dress a few days ago and it kind of dawns on her how much she has to do and how little time and energy she has to do it. She ends up asking me if I can scrap my dress and we go with like matching old navy t-shirt dresses and I'm like, no, not after how much work I put into mine. Yeah, that's, you're totally justified. I mean, I don't see why you couldn't wear your dress and she could wear an old navy dress. Like cosplaying is for fun just cause one of you doesn't have the full cosplay doesn't mean you can't still like be the characters together. I end up making both of our boleros and face masks and we figure out a way to simplify her dress. So we were ultimately able to bring them to the convention. Unfortunately, shortly after that, we had a falling out for mostly unrelated reasons and no longer speak. Oh, I'm sorry. As far as I know, she doesn't cosplay anymore. So since twin cosplays aren't exactly something you can cosplay alone, at least without getting weird comments at cons, people that come up and say weird sh that's weird. Like you're wearing a cosplay cause you like the character, not because you are the character. Your cosplay is for you and you shouldn't care what anybody else thinks. Uh, the end of that story is, I was never super into Nier and I'm stuck with a cosplay I've dumped nearly $200 and over a year of my life into that I'm never going to wear. Oh, I'm so sorry. I feel like that's one of those cases where you take the L 
and you sell it if you can. Sometimes we cosplay for friends because it's fun to cosplay with friends, but you gotta remember there's always the possibility that that friend might not finish, that friend might not want to do it. So I think a good mentality going into group cosplays should always be, would I be okay doing this alone? And if you're not, maybe don't do it. Okay, switch books. Why did I pick a bunch of like delicate heirlooms? Is it funnier if it's upside down? Okay, so mine's not so much a cosplay horror story as a convention story. But for ColossalCon 2018, my friends and I were planning on driving to Ohio from Colorado. If you have no idea what ColossalCon is, it is a big giant water park convention. So these people are incredibly justified to go all the way to Ohio for this. Last minute, like a week of, my mom forbade me from driving, even though I was a whole adult and we weren't even taking my car. And to avoid causing too much family or friend drama, I agreed if she could help us pay the extra money that it would cost for us to take transportation. For some reason, she decided we should take a train instead of a plane. What? And we ended up on a 24 hour ride to Ohio. Oh no. <laughs> The train broke down a bunch of times and we didn't even get our hotel until three or four in the morning. And there was no Uber to be had ever. So we were consistently waiting one and a half to two hours to get rides to the convention since we were unable to get a room at the Kalahari. Oh God, you guys weren't even staying in the Kalahari and you went 24 hours to get to Ohio. At one point we got this random Uber dude's number and we realized a bit too late that he was just undocumented and gonna pick us up. Ooh. And we were too uh, socially awkward to say anything. Can relate. Nothing luckily happened, but oh my God, we really just got into a stranger's car in the middle of Ohio. There were also a lot of creeps at the con who were trying to convince me and my friend to go to their hotel rooms. No. Get those people out of the con. And we're also trying to grind on us at the rave. Gross. I'm so sorry that happened to you. This next one is for, mm, switch books. <laughs> this next one is from Majulika. I'm sorry that I don't know how to say your name, but I also have a fairly short one. My boyfriend and I booked a cosplay photo shoot one month in advance. My boyfriend did not tell me he didn't order his wig until a week before. Oops. And he told me this the night before the shoot. Oops. We had to cancel last minute. Oh. The photographer takes it gracefully, but canceling day of slash before is still a huge no-go. A year later, so last week, I step up for judging at my first cosplay contest. The judge is the photographer. Are they also a cosplayer? Or did they just have like a photographer be a judge? They must also be a cosplayer, right? The judge is the photographer who I had not had contact with since canceling on her. Did it affect my score? Honestly, probably not. This girl was one of the sweetest people I've ever met. Was it embarrassing? Yeah, a lot, a lot embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. But I mean, it wasn't your fault. I think <laughs> the theme of all of these is it wasn't your fault people are bad and mean to you. Uh, or it's not your fault your boyfriend didn't buy his wig. Yeah, and I'll also I'll say there's no way me as somebody that does judging would ever like let something like that affect how I objectively like looked at somebody's cosplay. And I think most judges are like that, that they're there to look at your cosplay. They aren't looking at the person in the cosplay. For a home con, I built a fairly large armored costume and I decided to join the cosplay contest, but needed help walking around plus getting up the stairs since I had LEDs installed in my helmet and couldn't see. Oh yeah, you needed a handler. A handler is a very good friend that walks around the con with you and holds your hand and gives you water. Special shout out to Pins who has been my handler many times. Uh, actually, when I was in Pink Diamond, sat on the concrete floor and sewed a pearl back onto my little shorts. Another cosplayer who was a bit controversial offered to help me and actually borrowed someone else's cosplay from the same series so it would look better? What? The pl oh, oh, okay, uh, this confused me for a second, but they were doing the cosplay contest and they needed somebody to go on stage with them 
and apparently a cosplayer who is a bit controversial, I'm not sure what that means, offered to get another cosplay that like matched their cosplay to go on stage with them and like hold their hand across the stage. Okay, the plan was she would get on stage with me, but only I was a part of the competition. Yeah, that's, that's what handlers do. If you don't know, you're allowed to go on stage with another person and have them help you get across the stage and not have that person like affect your score. Like they're literally just there to help you. During prejudging, I was speaking about how scared I was since it was my first competition and expressed some concerns. From this, my guide decided she would do the noble thing and also join the competition, but she's in a cosplay that she borrowed. I didn't know how much later, but she actually walked over to the owner of the costume, who was also in the prejudging room, and asked if she could take credit so she could join me. What the f- Here's the thing. The whole point of a craftsmanship costume contest is to celebrate the hard work and innovation that cosplayers go through to make their own creations. And a thing that is okay to do is, it is okay to make a costume and have someone else wear it for you, but you are the one competing. If I make a costume and have my boyfriend model it, I would need to be with him in the prejudging. I would not need to go across the stage, but the award would be mine and not his, because he's the model. It is okay to be a model for a costume and have the other person there with you in prejudging, but it is their prejudging and their award and not the models. I don't, I don't like where this is going. Anyway, the owner was actually close friends with one of the judges. So I assume that there was a side conversation later that day. Mm-hmm. Judges usually know when this kind of shit happens because the thing about the cosplay community a lot of us know each other. <laughs> Anyways, I was still able to walk on the stage, but my guide kind of ran away after my part was done, which prompted others to leave and look for her. Two months later, the owner of the costume messaged me saying she was sorry for the misunderstanding during con, which was when I put two and two together and that she never got the costume back. Wow. It's one thing to like, borrow your friend's wig and then like not give it back because like wigs are replaceable but a handmade costume the hours it takes to make it you don't get any of that back i i feel really bad where did that happen i'm curious okay <laughs> I've, I've got casey's book here but this one is not from casey it's from k does cosplay at home at 2021 i was wearing mona from genshin impact and I was about to head to my shoot. Well, I started walking from one room with my roomie, and then a Harley Quinn cosplayer taps me on the shoulder and says, oh my God, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but your underwear is showing, oh no. Actually, that that's so random because I've had, I was leaving home at one year, I had like all my bags and I was wearing like a skirt and somebody tapped me on the shoulder and went, um, your skirt's caught on your bag and your underwear is showing. And that happened at home at. Back to the story. I'm like, oh my God, but thankfully I wasn't that far from the room. So I went back and sure enough, I had a big rip in my pants. <laughs> Cue SpongeBob song. Basically the cosplay I bought, the uwa uwa uwa, uwa uwa, you know the one I'm talking about. Didn't do a zigzag stitch or stretch stitch on the stretch fabric. So it was just ripped in the center of the bodysuit. It wasn't big, maybe the size of a half dollar, and was likely unnoticeable because of the cape, but still. Thankfully, my friend basically shoved safety pins in my butt. <laughs> I'm 12. <laughs> to fix it for the shoot. True friendship, that is true friendship. <laughs> Moral of the story is, if you buy a cosplay and it's stretch, bold, check if they did a stretch stitch and then you won't end up like the fool who ripped her pants. This one is from Maho, I forgot to switch books again. I ran out of books though, so we're going back to RuneScape. Yeah, this is a RuneScape book. This one is from Maho Melody. Oh my God, I have so many, but this is the one I remember most. So I was 16 and dressed as Rise from Persona 4, which was a half zipped jacket top that covers her bra. So I was doing my thing and this dude asked for a photo and I was like, yes, but then he asked me for, he asked me for 
fan service photos. Ew. Oh my god. And he was just like, ju- this one's gonna need a trigger warning. Trigger warning, right here. Uh, trigger warning, people pressuring people to take their clothes off. Holy sh**. And I was like, sorry, um, I can't, I'm 16. And he was like, just open your shirt. This is where the police should have been. And I was like, uh, it doesn't open. It did and I was lying. Good job, good lie. It was fixed in a way it wouldn't open because I was paranoid, that's good. And then he was like, oh, uh, 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 can I read this? This is f***ed up. And then he was like, oh, I'll help. Oh, I hate this one. And broke my cosplay open so he could take a photo of an underage girl in her bra. Wee woo, wee woo. No, 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 no. I managed to get away and safety pin myself together. I'm glad you got away. But the rest of the day, he wouldn't stop following me around the entire con. All day after that, I was terrified. I was literally afraid to go home in case he would follow me. But thankfully, at the end of the day, someone got proposed to or something and he got distracted and I bolted oh my god i was legitimately so scared he then afterwards found my personal facebook and sent the photo to me i just want to say if anyone ever does something like this to you at a con report them to the staff they will help you it is their responsibility to keep you safe and most cons if not all of them take that responsibility very seriously and they don't want these people at the con as much as we don't want these people at the con so always say something always we'll just stay in runescape i'm tired of switching books and this one looks the most like halloweeny this next one is from avery from callow cosplay when me and my cosplay partner were making our love life time travel costumes Things were going great. We did several fittings of the bodice slash bodysuit and things were looking amazing. It was easily one of our favorite parts because of how close they looked to the art and how comfy the material was. They were super stretchy and taking them on and off was no issue in our try-ons. Oh, that's the best. The morning we leave for the convention, we do our usual try-ons to make sure everything is finished. I'm trying mine on, it looks great. Now I need to take it off and pack it. I bend down to take the shorts off and the entire back pops open. Oh no. The zipper pull was still at the top of the zipper, but the teeth had separated. Fuck. It is the worst thing in the world when a zipper breaks because the worst thing in sewing, the most annoying thing in sewing is installing a zipper and then having to reinstall it. We spent like 30 minutes trying to fix it before saying fuck it. We'll cut off the strap from the bottom of the bodysuit, like the crotch part, because we didn't need it for fit anyway, and hand sewed a modesty panel and snaps to close it in our hotel room. Friday of the con, we're pulling them on for pre-judging. I get mine on. Awesome. Great. My friend Sarah puts hers on and her zipper also pops. No. So we shimmy it off her, force the zipper back up, down over the separation and try again. It stays, but we are stressed about it coming apart during pre-judging. It didn't though. Pre-judging went okay-ish. Secondary malfunction, the tights I used for the top part of my illusion thigh-high socks were insanely slippery material. So now the booty shorts were sliding all over the place. I managed to keep them on for pre-judging, but walking down the hallway from the room to the elevator, they literally fell down around my ankles. Luckily, no one was super close by, so I don't think I flashed anyone. But because of the large plastic skirts, Sarah literally had to crouch down and tug them back up my legs for me because we couldn't reach below our own skirts. Oh, I know how that feels. It is not fun. We go back to the room, minor mental breakdown time. Luckily, we brought a bag of snaps. So we add six snaps to the waistband of the bodysuit on both cosplays to avoid flashing people on stage. Day two, contest day. We put our outfits on about an hour and a half before rehearsal because we are nervous about damage control. Sarah puts her bodysuit on and the zipper teeth separate again. We shimmy it off, fix the zipper, put it on and it almost immediately snaps again. We try this three times until finally she just says, you have to sew me in. I just picture this is like so dramatic. Like she's like,
you have to sew me in. <laughs> the desperation, the dedication, I love it. Okay, and that's exactly what I did. It was really hard to sew through the vinyl gloss section, which was not stretch and probably also what strained the zippers, but it worked. A little messy, but not super visible. We also had these headphone pieces that were stupidly fragile because I'm not very good at props. And right before our walk on, Sarah moves her head too fast and one of them falls off. We assume it's broken because it hit the floor. Miracles and wonders, it's not. So I carefully place it back in her wig. Two seconds later, she reached up to adjust it and it breaks in her hand. We did in fact place third in masters. Yay! And I still don't know why. I guess we just hit our sins well, but I have never had so many separate things go wrong with the cosplay. And I've never had so many things just straight up break on me. Yeah, things breaking on you is like the worst feeling. This one comes from Anonymous. I went to a con back in June and it was my first time going as Rosalina. A couple of my friends had some autographs and photos to do, so I decided to go to the console free play area and play some Mario Kart. Fun fact about me, I'm a competitive Mario Kart player, tournament level. This guy in a Naruto cosplay comes up to me and asks, oh no. This sounds fake. I'm not saying you're a liar. I don't wanna believe somebody said this. They said, hello, milady. Are you interested? in a player too. I've dealt with cringe creeps at cons many times before, but I wasn't gonna just exclude this guy. So I told him sure, and that the rules were set to 200 CC. No auto turn, no items. You can turn items off in Mario Kart now? And I had warned him that I was a high level player, so he wouldn't get butt hurt if I beat him. He got cocky and came closer to me, putting his hand on my shoulder saying, ew, why is he touching you? Well. We'll see about that princess. I really don't wanna believe that this happened. I wanna believe you're making this up. <laughs> okay, apparently the full statement was, well, we'll see about that princess. I think you underestimate my abilities. I told him to not touch me and backed up a bit. Good call. Rolling my eyes because dude was trying to sound like he was in an anime. Yeah, that's, that's why the story is like, how does a person talk like this? I chose a couple courses and as expected, I wiped the floor with him. We had gotten a small crowd of like seven people behind us at this point and the dude was just screaming at me about how the game was rigged and that I was a bitch and I was trying to make him look bad, bruh. At that point, I had just had enough and I looked at him and told him, calling me a bitch isn't going to fix your skill issue and it ain't gonna get you any <laughs> and it ain't gonna get you any bitches either. And then everybody clapped. No, it's not in the story. <laughs> That's not in the story. I'm just being a piece of sh He tried to come up to me as I was walking away, asking me for a photo, and I just looked at him and told him, after that, absolutely not. I hate people sometimes. Yeah, I genuinely don't wanna believe that that's true, but funnily enough, I have a similar story. So it's 2019 and I'm going to Dragon Con, right? I wasn't staying at any hotel. I was actually commuting to the con. So we were Ubering in every day. And I'm of course Ubering in in cosplay. This was the end of summer 2019. So the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer had just come out and I was in Breath of the Wild 2 Zelda. I've had a lot of different experiences in cosplay in Ubers. Uh, sometimes people are really nice and sometimes are, people are really weird and the best people don't say anything. Love those people. Anyway, we get into this Uber and the conversation is immediately like, oh, why are you dressed like that? And I'm like, oh, we're going to Dragon Con. And he's like, oh, cool, cool. Who are you? And I was like, I'm Zelda from Breath of the Wild. And he's like, oh, I don't know what that is, but he starts calling me Zelda. And he kind of said it like, oh, okay, Zelda, okay. So we're driving in this Uber. It's about a 30 minute ride. And he starts talking to the guy I was dating at the time, who was in the front seat. And out of the blue, he just asks him, do you like football? And he's like, no, not, I'm not really into football. I, I play video games. Guy's like, oh yeah, I love video games. I love Madden. 
I'm not sure how the conversation got to this because this is the part of my story where it starts to sound fake as because I think what happened was the guy I was dating said something like, oh yeah, we play video games together, referring to me. And the guy is like, she plays video games? She likes video games? You don't play video games. He like, like, it sounds fake, but it, it f***ing happened to me in a cosplay of one of the best selling and best games of all time. It's hard to believe that people are like that, but I'm not making that up. I'm sure our friend here was also not making it up, but God, when you act like a terrible made up Reddit post, you just make the world worse. I think that's enough stories for this Halloween season. I wanna give a big shout out to Sweetbean52 in our Discord, who I bought this top from. It's a handmade crochet top that she made and she also sent me this beautiful little candy corn bat and I love him. Also, some housekeeping. I will be doing a panel at Anime Weekend Atlanta on October 29th at 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> it's a panel about the absolute basics of sewing. So if you wanna come learn the basics or just say hi, please come. It's my first panel and I'm a little scared that only like three people are gonna show up. If you're working on a cosplay right now or you got something done while this is playing, please let me know in the comments. And it helps the channel out a lot if you break a needle on that like button for me. If you have any questions, wanna submit your own cosplay horror story or just want a soft and cozy community to come to, please come join our Discord. And a big thank you to my big support tier patrons, Pin, Snip, Claire, Samita, Emily, and Reiko. If you wanna support the channel, you can check out my Patreon, but if you're just watching, liking, commenting, or subscribing, you're helping the channel too. So thank you. Bye! Ooh.